Hello and welcome to the Source One podcast. Consider us your source for the latest procurement, supply management, and strategic sourcing insights. Anytime, anywhere. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Source One podcast. I'm here once again talking talent with our good friend Andrew Jones. How's it going, Andy? It's going well. How are you? Eh, Not too bad. And today we are going to be talking about a topic that should be familiar to everybody in supply chain management, uh, total cost of ownership, but more specifically how we can apply TCO to staffing. Uh, Andy, in a nutshell, what does total cost of ownership mean in the world of recruiting and staffing? I always take it uh, as total cost of ownership Meaning, to break it down, it's just like what's cheap, cheapest is not always the best. Mm-hmm. That's total cost of ownership. So you don't always want to look at what's... Right. It's, it's really at the heart of taking a more strategic approach to purchasing, right? Mm-hmm. Thinking about things beyond the, the sticker price. Uh, so obviously, most organizations would like to think of themselves as being mindful of total cost of ownership. When it comes to staffing, do you think... People are typically thinking of things with TCO in mind. No, no. I think everybody wants to get the best price and the, the bottom dollar. Um, and I know, you know, I, you're getting, people roll their eyes and say, "Oh, that's just recruiter speak," but it's not. Uh, you know, I always the analogy I always make, and I love analogies. Maybe like a used car analogy. You know, you see something. And it's twenty five hundred dollars for a used car. Mm-hmm. When you're thinking that's a great price, so you go pay the twenty five hundred dollars for it. And then three weeks later, you have to get a new transmission, which is four thousand dollars. And then the muffler might go. And then this. Go- and by the time it's all done, at the end of the year, you might have sunk ten grand into that car mm-hmm. when you could have paid, let's say, nine thousand dollars and not had any of those problems for the year. Um, or even, I mean, we talk about housing. New construction. Mm-hmm. I mean, the reason why new construction is more expensive is because everything's new. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can go into an older house and then you've got to replace a hot water heater in six months, which is $10,000. Mm-hmm. Then you're, you know, maybe looking at having to get a new roof on that house, which might be another $10,000. So at the end of the day, what did you actually save by going cheap up front? You didn't save anything. And... I look at that way when it comes to staffing too. You know, people look at us and they're like, well, we're paying you guys a fee, so we need to skim on what we're gonna pay our category manager. Well, if you're gonna go cheap on, let's say, a category manager for a position that you need to fill, you bring somebody in for, you, you bring somebody in that's cheap, you might have to train them up, which mm-hmm. could take two months of ramp up time, which you don't have, uh-huh. because you're not completing projects, which means you're not getting revenue in the door which means your reputation suffering. So at the end of the day, had you actually paid another $20,000, you could have made maybe another 100 mm-hmm. So that old cliche, you get what you pay for, certainly rings true when it comes to staffing and recruiting. Always. I think it rings true In all everything. the time. Yeah. What does the process of calculating TCO look like? I imagine it comes down to you know um, looking at more than salary. How, how does a, an organization calculate what they uh, should spend on a candidate? Um, I think they, they need to know the market. Um, they need to know what people are making for like an IT category manager. What's the average salary for an IT category manager? And then understand that we're not living in average times, so you're going to have to pay a little bit more for that. Mm-hmm. And then you also need to know what projects you have coming through and how important the filling of the role is. You, you might have to look at going another twenty to $30,000 above what the market is because to secure somebody that's worth it, they're going to want that somebody good's gonna save you a lot more money than somebody who's kind of, eh. Are there new uh, things that people should be factoring into the TCO? I mean, it really all depends on what people value. So um, I know this one company we're recruiting for, like they redid their entire corporate building and it's like gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I think the size of the team, the kind of technology they have, uh, the personalities, uh, the personalities of their managers. At the end of the day, it's, it's a couple things, right? It's how much you're going to make mm-hmm. and what is your direct boss like to work with? And are you going to have a chance to advance in your career? Mm-hmm. Those are the three things. I mean, like I said, you go to every recruiting seminar, it's like, well, tell them about this and casual Fridays and this. And Most people don't really care a whole lot. Rather than coming into the um, interview and recruiting process with 
a set in stone, this is what we're paying, this is what we're offering, do you recommend they, through that interview process, learn to kind of tailor their compensation packages to the candidate, figure out what that candidate's values are, and then really um, you know, come up with something that's going to serve their total cost of ownership and also... Yeah, well, I mean, unfortunately, happy. before you go ahead and release something like this, you've always got to set a budget. That's just the way it is. It's like anything that you do, period. I mean, if you shop for deck furniture or a car, like you, you have a maximum number that you think you want to go to mm -hmm. until you actually go out and hit that mark and say, well, hey, listen, I thought $15,000 for a brand new X, Y, and Z was going to be enough, but obviously it's going to cost me seventeen. But you should realize that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking to candidates, either it's you or it's us. And, you know, as recruiters, I think we all have a reputation that we're trying to max out salaries anyway because we get paid on the fee of the first year. But the fact of the matter is there's not one single recruiter out there that I know who would rather have zero placements versus one placement. Mm -hmm. I don't know too many recruiters. I actually don't know any that are going to go ahead and max out a salary just to max out a salary. You know, it, it doesn't happen. Um, do you think companies should give themselves a little bit more leeway where budgets are concerned in these yeah. sort of situations? Yeah, you have to. Mm -hmm. you, you absolutely have to, especially now. I mean, we might have a different conversation four years from now, but as of right now, yeah. You've been listening to the Source One podcast. For more strategic sourcing and procurement insights every day, visit our blog, The Strategic Sorcerer. Want to provide feedback or suggest a topic for a future episode? Let us know at prrequest at sourceoneinc.com. Thanks for listening.